right, welcome to All Shook Up, the podcast. Ah, my guest today, where do I start? This man, 15 years he's been racing. And I'm telling you from my perspective, for 15 years he's been getting it done. Um, Couple things, 11 points championships. I think those were in go-karts, 11 points championships. That's huge. I think Faith had four when she was racing in go-karts. And um, then, after go-karts, this gentleman moved up to, he moved right from go-karts to dirt late models. And in a couple years time, he's got 10 plus feature wins. And we're not talking uh, feature wins against just some local guys. We're talking some big names in the business. Um, and we'll talk about that as we as we spend an hour together chatting with my friend, the legend, the man, Logan Nickerson. Welcome to Ashoka. Uh, well, thanks for having me. Um, I'm super excited to be here. Uh, I, I look forward to it, and I, I think we're going to have a good time. I think so, too. I think so too. It's it's funny when uh when you're not racing, you're driving a UPS truck. <laughs> <laughs> yep, do, I, do, I am. <laughs> do, do, do you do you race that too? Uh, no, I try not to. You try not to. Yeah. I wonder, do they have that governed? Uh, yeah. They do. Sixty nine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, Sixty nine Speci- to like seventy one, uh, they don't go any faster than that. Yeah, especially when they know a race car driver. <laughs> uh, you want to hear a funny story about that? Yeah. I actually got pulled over in the UPS truck. No way. Yes. Um, I was coming into a town and wasn't really paying attention. And, uh, yeah, he he caught me speeding a little bit. Oh, no. Yeah, I, I got, he's a super nice cop. He didn't give me a ticket or nothing, but I, I'm i sure that was a sight for all the people in front of the apartment complex is a UPS man getting pulled getting over. Getting pulled over for speeding. <sighs> That's good. That's good. Did your boss find out? No, no, I didn't oh, tell him. What if he watches this? I mean, then I... <laughs> Hi, Chad. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's good. And I, I love that attitude, too. You know, and it, it's the way I am, man. It, it is what it is, you know. It's it's not like you were out there trying to speed. I mean, we all... It was, it I, I don't was, know how many times I've pulled into a town and it drops from 55 to 35 and you look up and, whoa... But anyway, <laughs> so oh, sorry. so I, I I'm gonna be honest with you. Um, I got five or six people committed to being guests on my podcast, and um, I should have already sat down by now and made a list of people I want to invite, but I haven't done that yet. Mm-hmm. And until last Friday, when you come whipping in the <laughs> shop with my UPS parts. I hadn't thought of having you on here. And I was like, it was like a, I don't know, like a light lit but, up. Like, like, a, ah. like a sign. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> so, um, but anyway, so I asked you and you said yes, thank you. And the funny thing is, is um, I was thinking of the same thing. But anyway, I asked you, I was like, well, if you can think of any pictures or anything, you know, you want to bring up on the podcast or Mm -hmm. something we could talk about and I had been thinking about a certain article and you brought (laughs) it up I think Joshua's got a picture of that now I know I'm gonna put you on the spot Joshua I don't remember what number it is it's probably seven the most recent one show everybody this is the article that that you asked about I searched today and it took me about a half an hour but I found it where did you end up finding it I I found it on Fly and Faith Racing's Facebook page oh you just went went way I mean it was that was that's a good idea I'd have never thought like that I I don't remember what year that was but uh, I want to read the what's the headline something about can you make it any bigger so I can see it I can't. There it goes. Points leaders Logan Arts and Faith Shook, and that was in that was I think in 2010, nine or ten. It's probably nine. You were 11 years old. Yeah, because I think that was that was probably our last year of the purple plate class. Okay, I think it was 2010. 
because that body mm-hmm. we talked about earlier was 2009, and she wasn't the no. points leader then, yeah. so it was 10. Okay, that makes sense. 2010 anyway, and Faith and you were both points leaders at that point. Crazy. Talk about that a little bit That back then. Well, I mean, my, uh, my pop race growing up, and I watched him, and I remember one day, uh, Troy and Tanner Freeman, I went to school with them, and uh, they were talking about racing and how they raced their go-karts at Westward Kart Speedway, and... I was telling my pops about it, and he ended up uh, reaching out to Dave, and, you know, we uh, ended up going over there, and we tested with uh, one of the boys' old carts for four, four and a half hours or whatever, and we ended up leaving with that cart in the bed of our truck. Nice. And uh, that was the year that we ran maybe, like, 11 races or whatever. Our pops would race on Fridays. I would race on Saturdays. And then, um, and he, but he would race where Mount Pleasant. Yep, he would race at Mount Pleasant. Okay, and, in the late model. Yep, in the late model, and then we would go to VKS on the Saturdays with the go karts. Um, I got so many good memories of that place. Oh, yeah. me too. I, I mean, I still drive me down too. that road sometimes just to, just to relive it. You know, yeah. that's where, that's where it all began. Yep. Yep. I mean, from I, I still know most of the people that we saw there. You know what I mean? I'm still right. in contact with most of them. Right. Today. That's where we met. Yeah, I mean, I mean that's that's, that's what I mean. I'm from. still in contact with most of these people today. So it was a. Uh, any like any events or special races or anything that really stick out to you, or all of them, or <sighs> that really stick out to me. You know what I used to love when we went there? I used to love the how the first few years, three or four years, they had it. They always had two night events on holidays. Memorial oh, yeah, Weekend, Fourth of July. I used to love those because we'd stay the whole weekend, mm-hmm. you know. And, and everybody would have fun and cook after the races and stay around for yeah. a little while. Yeah. I remember that too. Oh, I would say that if I had to pick a race from Vestaberg that sticks out the most in my mind, it would be, um, it was a mid-season championship. And I was, um, me and Russell Botter were uh, battling for it to see who was going to be leading at the, you know, the halfway point, obviously. And uh, I can't remember what happened, but uh, there was... 15 or 18 go-karts that night because we had had pretty good car counts at that time and uh i spun out running like second or third and i remember they sent me to the back and i was so mad and i mean i was just a little kid and i'm you know yelling in my helmet just just mad at the world and i remember i decided there were like 10 12 laps left in the race i'm like i'm gonna win this thing i'm like i'm gonna i'm gonna win this race I didn't, but we ended up like third. So, I mean, it wasn't too bad of a story. Right, right. So it was nice to, you know. But uh, it just it just to think of like that determination involved, or not involving, but developing so young. You know what I right, mean? Like that right. determination of, well, I'm not going to give up. I'm just going to. Oh, some of my best, going. some of my best memories are, weren't necessarily wins. Yeah. But like that, you spun out, went to the back, and made it all the way back to third. That's the effort and the determination. That's good stuff. It was, you, know? Uh, you know, one of my favorite stories of Vestaberg, I don't know if you remember, but back then, the first year, my son Tyler raced. And um, what was his name? Kyle Hansen, yep. num- number two. Yep, I remember, remember? him. And him and him and Ky- Tyler and Kyle raced together in the same class. I think it was, I don't forget what the class was called. But anyway, they, they fought back and forth the whole season. One week, Kyle would be in the lead in points. I think I the remember. The next week was Tyler. I, I think I remember yeah, that. Ky- Tyler would win one week, then Kyle would like, win. Because Dave was playing into it, too, wasn't he? Oh, yeah. yeah oh, he yeah, over the announce. Yeah, he was. You get him all riled up. We went into we went into season championship night that night. Where it could have been either one of them. And after you know how they, I think they did it. I know they did it the same. They used to always run two heat races mm-hmm. and a feature. 
So after the first heat race, Tyler won, so he was in the points lead. Mm. Second heat race, Kyle won, and he got the points lead back. Then in the championship, they battled back and forth and swapped first place like six times. It was the craziest. I mean, that is what it was all about, mm -hmm. you know. I, I was thinking of that. The reason I'm so fresh, that's fresh in my mind, because I was thinking about that today. And, uh, you know, I, I told you upstairs before we sat mm -hmm. down that we were going to talk a little bit about haters and but not so much haters just you know i i used to always i talked about this in my first episode i used to i used to find it hard to root for other female racers and to mm -hmm. cheer them on and encourage them because i figured the more female racers there was the less chances faith would have of winning right you know and i've since my mindset has changed greatly since then and now it's, I believe with all my heart, the more you root for others, cheer others on, the better you're going to do. It's just, you get what you sow kind of philosophy. And um, and I tell you what, races like that, you know, that's what you want. You don't, you don't want to be out there 10 laps ahead of everybody, no, no competition. And no, you want to fight back to and forth that. all season long with somebody and... And, you know, not know if you're going to win from one week to the next. And, you know, I remember Tyler not being upset when Kyle beat him, you know, because it was that close, you know. I, That's the thing. How do you get upset when it just it just didn't swing your way? You know, right, it, right. you did everything you could and it just didn't quite happen to go your way. So. Right. so I I have a question that I want to ask you. So. You you did go-karts for 11, 12 years. I'm remembering your first year in the late model. The very first yep. year you drove it. Yep. Talk about that. You only drove it one track, right? Yep. I drove it at Mid-Michigan Raceway Park in Palo, Michigan. And um, I was forced to start in the back, and I wasn't allowed to pass anybody. For the whole season? No. No, well, it for, was funny story. <laughs> it was supposed to be for the whole season. Okay. But we went through the our first night we get there, hot laps went great, the heat race went great. So I'm, you know, I'm 14 years old and I'm just I'm right at pop's neck. I'm like, "Hey, come on, just let me pass somebody." I'm like, "What if what if the opportunity just presents itself and I just take it, you know?" And he's like, no, do not pass anybody. And I'm like, come on. And I mean, I bugged him about it for an So hour. that's who forced you this? Yes, okay. yes. Nope, this wasn't, wasn't by... Wasn't against the track no, rules Nope, this nothing. wasn't okay. a track. This wasn't drivers. This was all done by Pops. And uh, so anyways, I finally, you know, keep bugging him, keep bug bugging him. And he's like, fine, you want to pass somebody so bad? He said, do it, but don't wreck my race car in the process. And I'm like... All right. So Challenge. this was still the first night? Yeah. Oh, wait. Yeah, 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 I was 14 years old. First night I'd ever drove a race car. Well, first night I'd ever raced a race car. We okay. had practiced four or five, six nights before. Okay. So get out there in the feature and everything's going good. You know, I'm running in the back, minding my business. and Somebody slides up the track and he, he keeps sliding up the track, sliding up the track. And I see this and, you know, the the racer in me. It's like, I'm going to pass him. So I remember I just, I don't really exactly remember what went through my mind, but I just remember steadily picking up the pace and getting faster and faster. And before I know it, I, I mean, I'm, I'm racing with this guy. And uh, so I drove it in really hard into one. And uh, I hit the brakes because I thought I drove it in too hard. And I smoked the wall. Oh no! Smoked the wall. And it was a long car ride home. <laughs> it was only a twenty-minute car ride home, and that thing felt like hours. Yeah, I remember just sitting in the passenger Silent seat. Silent treatment. Oh, or? oh yeah, not a word. Oh my! Not, not a word. I'd have rather got yelled at. You're, uh, yeah, not a word. Uh, yeah, uh, sometimes that can be louder than words. I think we. Uh, he didn't let me unload the car for like two weeks. It was no. It, it was he proved a point. Yeah, and I wasn't well, allowed, I wasn't allowed to pass nobody after that. All right, but that didn't last real long either. So you went back again. 
Yep. You're not supposed to pass anybody. Yep, and we did maybe, I think. Now remember, folks, this is a guy who won 11 champions, points championships in his go-kart. This guy <laughs> lived to win races. Now he's got to drive around in the back. Oh, my. <laughs> okay, so you go so, back. So we go back, we race a couple times, and we just run around the back. You know, we're having fun, we're learning. Well, I remember it was it was like last race of the season of that same year, and uh, we had borrowed a motor from my Papa Dean. And I can't remember exactly what it was, but it was a little steel block, nothing crazy. And uh, so we went out to Palo, and I was running. I was actually leading my heat race, and um, I, I lost an oil. So wait, line. did you start up front then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yep, yep. You didn't pass nobody to no, get No, 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 no. It was okay. all it was all draw at this point. Okay. At this point, actually, Pop was letting me pass. Oh, okay. This is towards the end. This is like the very last race of that first year, and um, I was running. I think I was running first. I was either running first or second in the heat race, and I lost oil pressure. So I obviously turned the car off and pulled mm-hmm. into the infield. And um, Palo would only get, you know, 12 to 15 cars. That's what made it so great to learn at. Right, right. And I think this night they only had probably eight or so. And um, so we blew an oil line, and they would completely redraw everybody because there were only eight of us. They'd just take chips, and wherever he ended up, he ended up. So I, uh, I got to start third. And we had went in and... You know, we had checked all the oil lines. We got the one fix that we had lost and, you know, put some oil in it, and we thought we were good to go. That was bad idea number one. Because you never, never run a motor after blowing an oil line in those cars because they just, the dirt gets in there, and it just, it's not meant to be without oil pressure at all. Right. And uh, so we went back out there. Ran the whole race. I was running second. And uh, we get to the finish line, and I, I blow a hole in the side of the block. Oh, no, no no indication on the gauges, no nothing. I come, I, They're hauling me into the pit, and I mean, I'm 14 years old, so I'm pretty upset because I just blew up a motor that I, I know I can't replace it. Right. And uh, so we get back into the pit, and I'm the only one that's upset. Everybody else is excited. Everybody else is like, he just ran second. I'm like, our motor's got a hole in the block. <laughs> and they're like, well, we'll fix that. But you just ran second. You just ran second. You're 14 <laughs> years old. What are, you, what are you so mad about? You that, know? Right. Pops is like, you ain't got to pay for it. <laughs> Why are you worried? Right. It was a loner from your uh, uncle uh, or something. Uh, yeah. Sweet. But, <sighs> yeah. I, I remember... You know, I was thinking about that today, too, and I remember that real well. And I remember thinking a couple of different thoughts. How cool is that, first of all, from your pop's point of view and from my point of view? Because, you know, you were good in the go-karts. And, you know, I, I've been around a long time, okay? Back in the 80s, I raced cars over at Auburn. And uh, I remember going out there the first time I raced, going out there and thinking I could win races, you know? Mm-hmm. And I've seen so many people, you know, go out there and think they, they're just the cat's meow, you know, when it comes to racing. And then three, four weeks in, some of the guys that's been racing forever, got lots of experience, you know, mm-hmm. are beating them all the time. They're getting mad at those people beating them, you know? And, and I remember thinking back then, this guy's going somewhere racing because his pops is teaching him right, you know? Yeah, you're you're not ready to race up front with those guys yet, and let's be patient, you know. And we're not going to win a race overnight, but we're going to win a lot of races in the future. Good, it's, good, good teaching. It's a it's a it's a slow climb. It's definitely not something that you're going to do in even in even five years, in my opinion. Right. I mean, because it's just, there's so much to learn. It's constantly evolving. I mean, especially now, uh, I don't know about on the asphalt side of the world, but I know on our side of the world that we've gotten so technical with these cars that it's like, 
you can need a, a master's degree in engineering to work on them anymore. Right. Yeah. It's I amazing. mean, they they are just. Um, I don't Everything know. about them is made to go hard in circles. You know, and it's mm-hmm. just it's just crazy. I don't know if you uh, seen that picture of uh, the Kevin Rumley device deal that he built on that Jonathan Davenport's Longhorn when they had that miracle run back in, um, or well, I guess it wasn't a miracle That's run. The swing of the, yeah, the um, rear axle. Yup, or... it was that. It was that funny thing that they put on their left rear when Davenport won like the. He won the world. It was the year he won like six hundred thousand dollars. Right. And um, have you ever raced with him? I have. You have. Yes, I have. He has. I have raced with him. He has. <laughs> <laughs> he passed me, but I raced with him. <laughs> you're not five years in yet, though. Oh, you're about no, five no, years. No, in. we're five on. Six. I think this is. I think this will be our sixth full time year. Yeah. So, um, that's crazy. D- Davenport's been racing for 26 or 30. Probably. Yeah, I mean, he's he's been, ra- I, he's been I re- racing. I remember watching him when I was a kid. Yeah. Anyway, back to his <laughs> swing arm thing. I'm sorry. So, no, know. anyways, so Kevin Rumley and Davenport teamed up, um, a couple years or back in 2015, I think it was. Okay. And Rumley is a, a engineer and, uh, he made this thing, and I'm not kidding you, it literally looks like a pile of junk. Like that he put together, like mm-hmm. he, he they finally I, the picture came out three or four years after the whole ordeal, but um I mean it was it was I mean he had plastic discs holding things together like it was the goofiest looking thing ever, and I just I remember looking at that picture and I'm like, man, this is just getting to the point where there are people that work on race cars, there are drivers, and there are people like that. The people that are going to design the future of these cars, and it, it's gotten to the point where this isn't, you know, people don't understand how much of a team sport this really is. Right. So, no, they don't. And, and a lot of people listening to this podcast right now probably don't know much about racing at all, you know. And, uh, yeah, it's so technical. Mm-hmm. And, again, I think back to those people that get frustrated, you know, and and – you know, to to race at that level, you gotta have that team. You gotta have that. You know, that's the. Thing. You gotta have the whole package. We talked about this upstairs. Uh, tell me what you said upstairs about um, what I was asking you about how you have to represent your sponsor as well. Oh, I and mean, you talked I, about I, social media. I I feel as a driver, you are you're always representing your sponsors, even when you're not at the racetrack. I mean, even if I go out to, say, Cadoba and I'm wearing a sponsored shirt, I think that someone is going to recognize me in that shirt, and I want them to think positive about that sponsor. So I try to, you know, I try to keep my Facebook, my, I, I don't do a whole lot of social media, but, um, I mean, the Facebook, the Twitters, the, the Snapchats, the, all that stuff. I see a lot of people can get themselves in trouble because, you know, people's private lives aren't so private anymore. Right. And so you got to be real careful when you're, you know, showcasing these sponsors, in my opinion. Right. That's good stuff, man. Good stuff. No doubt about it. I always said that. And that I, we was always blessed. It, of course, it helped that Faith was cute. <laughs> Yeah, you know, that always helps, doesn't it? You you probably didn't have that. No, I didn't. Like, I, I, like I, I, she did. But, I, I got that after eighteen. But you know, <laughs> I, I remember back when I raced. I was I was that guy. I was I wasn't I wasn't good. I, I you know, I'm trying to be as transparent with my life as possible. But I was that guy that complained all the time and never had no money. And I'm only not winning because I didn't have any money. Well, I didn't have any money because I couldn't get sponsors. You know, but. I determined when Faith was six years old and I put her in a go-kart that that was going to be more important than winning races or anything. It was going to be to be a good sportsman on, off the track, 24-7. And it, just like you said, it, I mean, when we were in restaurants, when we were walking down downtown Mount Pleasant, wherever we were, and uh, it, it paid off for Faith. Faith raced for 12 years, and I don't... I mean, we're talking, dude... Low-income family, right? 
but she raced with the best of them because of sponsors, you know. Okay. And um, it, if you if you want to be successful in racing, you got to spend money. That's all there is to it. Because there's guys out there spending money. Yeah. You want to run with them, you got to spend money. If you ain't got money, you got to make yourself marketable. Exactly. You know, you're essentially. I mean, you are a product for your sponsors. I mean, in a way, That's you good. know, you know what I mean. I mean, yeah. you're. I like that. I just came up with that. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> and we're gonna have to come up with a quote and hang that on the wall or something. I like that. <laughs> That's good. You can make yourself marketable. And, but it's so true. So oh, uh, true. And you've always done a good job of that. I uh, I was excited. I seen you Friday. We talked about getting together and doing this. You told me you were racing Saturday night at Crystal mm -hmm. for the first time this year. Nope. So I was all excited. I, I got on Facebook. I, I'm ready to watch. I, I know you're going to be here Monday. We're going to record this, and I'm thinking this could be sweet. He's going to go win the feature at Crystal, and we're going to talk about it on Monday. And uh, But then I watched, and I watched, and I watched. And um, we were talking about this earlier, too. They What time they end up finally calling at 11 o'clock? Uh, it, it was somewhere in the neighborhood of 11 o'clock. 11 yeah. o'clock because of rain. And they had they had cars out there going on the track trying to dry it. They tried their and best. I have nothing but positive things to say about Crystal Motor Speedway uh, last Saturday. I mean, they gave it hell. I mean, they they had every pack truck they had out there. They were trying to get cars on the track. I mean. They wanted to race. Somebody said they had some late models out there. I, I mean, they did. They they were that's awesome. they were on the horn. They're like, you guys, if you want to race, we got to get some cars out here and pack the track. And I mean, they they gave it their all. I have absolutely nothing bad to say. Um, and I'm looking forward to going back. Uh, I'm excited to race there this year. I think there's a lot of good things new headed owners. their way. Yup, they got some new owners, uh, the LeBarons, and. Uh, they're very good people, and I'm, I'm pretty excited. Well, you gave me something to talk about tonight because of that rain. Um, it, I seen a post from Crystal, the owners must have been, and they was apologetic, and in, in, a, in a roundabout way, they were saying there was some people that weren't happy because they canceled, which I've been around racing a long time, and I, I hear it all the time, you know. Eight out of ten people at the track stay and do their best, and when when it finally they finally call it, so be it, you know. But there's always those couple people that complain. But then I saw your post, you know, and you had nothing but great things to say about them, and you were being very marketable. I like that. I like it, and I've always I've always felt that way about you. I've never seen anything other than that from you. I was um, respect was very big in my family. Uh, that was that was one thing that you know pops demanded grandpops and my mom all I mean they demanded that I was going to be a respectable young man so well it's obviously worked well I appreciate that yeah 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 like I said I've well we've known each other what did we figure out 15 16 yeah, years somewhere around that I've never known I've never seen another side to you so I, I don't believe there is one I, I believe it's You've always been that, you know. I'm just kind of a goofball, man. Yeah. I seen you when you were young, you know, <laughs> walking away from after a race that didn't maybe go your way or something, a little sad for a minute or something, but you never was disrespectful. You never blamed anybody else. You never, you know. I mean, there was times when it was pretty blatant it was somebody else's fault, but, yeah. You know, I, I think I heard you say several times back then, I'll get them next time. You know. I mean, it... You live in the past, you die in the past. Ooh. That's good. That's good. So, I mean, that's just... If you sit there and you dwell on every little bad thing that happens in your life or on the racetrack or at your job or with your family, then obviously, you know, you're going to have a, a bad mindset because you're always thinking about the bad. But if you think about all the good things... That's when you really, you know, realize how fortunate, how lucky, and just, oh, I don't even know where I'm going with this, but just how fortunate and how lucky we are to even be able to do this, 
how fortunate and how lucky we are to even be be able to be here and talking with friends and enjoying this life. Right. Right. Good job. Good job. I, so I had to stutter yeah. my way through it there for a minute. Oh, that's perfect, though. That's you. That's me. That was good stuff. You know, I, I think, I don't know, I just heard this recently, or I, I said it to my mom on the phone actually yesterday, but we was talking about that, your past, mm-hmm. and, you know, and uh, if you ever walk in, like we went and Joshua and I run Bundy Hill a couple times mm-hmm. recently, and I went with my wife and we walked it. If you ever walk on a trail in the woods like that or something, you got to look where you're going because there's rocks and sticks. Try looking back and walking up the hill. You're going to get hurt. That's what I'm saying. You know, and that's, that's exactly basically what, what you it, said. It's exactly you know, what it is. It takes an awful lot of work, and it's dangerous, and it doesn't do you any good at all, and it doesn't no, help you just, You know, look forward. and Let bygones be guy, bygones and move on. Right. Good stuff. Good stuff. Amen. All right. So, we've talked a lot about the past mm-hmm. what's what's your plans this summer uh my plans this summer i would uh we're gonna be at chris a lot obviously because it's uh, pretty close to our house um i'd like to be at i-96 every chance i get um tri City's got some great races up we'll be at those for sure um i'm sure we'll be up at merit for the wood tick um and then the Mars series is out this year, and uh, they've put together, I believe it is a 21 or a 22 race schedule, and they're all Friday, Saturday, Sundays, except for one. So uh, they made that pretty uh, achievable. You know what I mean? They made what, it. To what was it called? Uh, the Mars, the Mars series. They are. Um, it's basically. I think they're completely in Illinois this year. I don't think they go outside of Illinois. Does Mars have, uh, like, initials for something? Oh, uh, I would have... I don't s- know. Uh, I have no idea, to be honest yeah. with you. <laughs> so, it, but it's a series, a yep. tra- traveling series. Yep, it is a series. Um, It's actually... It used to be owned by Tony Izzo, the guy that owned LaSalle, and now it is owned by... um. I can't think of his name, but he's the promoter of Fairbury and Farmer City. Okay. So he um he has a pretty good relationship with all those Illinois tracks, from my understanding, and it looks like he put together a really good schedule. So and cool. like I said, with that Friday, Saturday, Sunday, hey, you can take a a Friday and a Monday off work, and it's a lot more achievable than having to take you know a Friday off for twelve individual weekends or something. Right. Cool. Yeah, I'll, to, I'll, I'll look into that too. The Mars. Series. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a pretty cool deal. I'm, so I'm excited for summer it. nationals. Summer nationals. We'll run some of that. I forgot about that. Yeah. Um, I think we got. I can't think. I know I took a week off to go run with the summer nationals, but I can't remember what week it is. Okay. I want to say. So like. Mid July. When they come up this way. Pretty much, or nope. It is actually, um, I think it was gonna be uh, everything was so- Southern Illinois. Okay. Yeah, Southern Illinois, a couple Ohio tracks. I don't think it was anything because I I think they only got one show in Michigan this year. So the Summer Nationals uh-huh. Hell Tour, right? Yep, yep. And I think it's Butler. Really? And I think they not Tri City have- or Merritt. Uh-uh. Wow. Yeah. They've been there the last couple of years. They have been. Huh. Now, that, have you ever thought about doing the whole thing? If if I could talk some uh, sponsors into giving me some money, I would <laughs> love to do the whole thing. Well, you're doing a good job of marketing yourself. Uh, I mean, I'm trying. You should be able to get a good sponsor. I'm trying. So, for our listeners, they're like, what are they talking about, Hell Tour, Summer Nationals? The Tell them a little bit about it. The Hell Tour is, um, well, I mean, I guess it's been refined a couple times, but essentially what it is, is it is about, I think it's 26 races in 32 days. Um, Did you hear that? 26 races in 32 days. So, I mean, they're they're up and down the road every day. Um, and and, and the, they're and, not like 10 minutes from each no, other. No, no, I mean, you got hour, two hour times. Oh. Uh, drive times stuff like that i mean sometimes you might have a six hour drive right 
Yeah. It, wow. It, yeah, and I mean that's a. That's so a so lot. you basically you race, load up, hurry right. up and get to the next track, fix your car or whatever. It needs race to be done, again. And, race again. And do the exact same thing over for twenty four more days. That sounds like a blast. I don't know if a blast is the word on you. Uh, <laughs> no, I would I would absolutely love to do it just for the experience. Oh, but uh, that sounds, I, I, sounds brutal. I, my pit crew's a little geriatric. I'm Did not gonna that? lie to you. <laughs> Did you hear that, David Goggins? Twenty six races in thirty two days. When's the last time you run 26 races in 32 days? He can do 64 races in yeah, 32 days. If anybody could do it, David Coggins could do it. <laughs> anyway. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I remember the first time I heard of them. I think I was, um, well, you know, you remember Faith won a sponsorship from yep. Champion Spark Club. Yep. And she that. was teammates with um, Bobby Pierce. Mm-hmm. And Bobby Pierce was running it that the first year I heard of it. Mm-hmm. And I, I think he, I don't know, I don't remember if he won it or the overall thing, or he was right there. I think. But I, I, they were going like from track to track. I'm like, no way. That's just crazy. I think Bobby is a four-time champion at this point. Of Summer Nationals? Uh-huh. Yeah. He's won it a lot. Yeah. He is the king of the Summer Nationals. Have you raced with him? I have. You have? I have raced with him. I know you raced with him at Merritt. I ha- yep, for the I've summer raced with, I've raced with him at Merritt. Um, I've raced with him at. Let me think about that. I raced with him at I fifty five. Um, I've raced with him at Fairbury, Farmer City. Um. It, it and just for the record, raced with. We're using this as a real loose term here, so let's not get carried away. Now wait, no, <laughs> don't underestimate yourself, though. I mean, but, do you know how many late mile, dirt late model drivers would like to be able to say what you just said? Oh, a lot. A lot. I'm very fortunate, yeah. 100%. You and Pop have put in the work. It's a... Uh, you're better. just getting started, it's, too. It's been a lot. I, I still think that, too. Everybody's like, man, you're still so young. I'm like, still so young. I feel like I've been doing this for forever. <laughs> Are you, you're not getting tired of it all, though, No, right? no, no. Oh, no, I have no intentions of going anywhere anytime soon. All right. But uh, it definitely has been different to learn how to how to race and be an adult. You know, because it's not it's not the same as racing and being a high school kid. You know, you gotta you gotta balance work. You gotta balance you know your family. Which I mean, I'm super thankful that my family has always supported being at the racetrack and doing all that. And, a, yeah. I like that. I like that. You got to balance that stuff. I mean, that's I, good. I mean, you do. I mean, you can. Any th- any too much of one thing can be a bad thing. Right, right. And so, I'm thinking. You know, <laughs> I'm always thinking of ways to better myself. And I, what you just said is good. I mean, I can remember a time in the past. Well, okay, so balance, yes. You're still going out there and winning, though. But you're balancing that stuff. So you're not using being an adult and having to work and stuff as an excuse not to do good at what you're doing. Does that make sense? Am oh, I no, no, that no, 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 yeah, 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 I totally understand what you're saying. Um, yeah, no, for sure. I mean, it's, I don't think it's an excuse. I just think it's, it's a change that you have to kind of learn to deal with. Right. You know, it's a, all changes have positive and negative reactions. So, I mean, it's just finding the one with the least negative reaction. Yeah, yeah, and you're still going out there, you're winning races, you're still putting in the work that it takes to do that, but you're not sacrificing, you know, you got, you got a new home. Well, and that's kind of the thing, it's a, I don't know, it's been, 
It's a lot. I mean, I I think my pops and and Eddie and uh, Jimmy. I mean, they they work their butts off week in and week out when I can't always be in the shop as much. And um, I mean, yeah, it's it's a lot of hard work and it takes a lot to keep a race. I mean, I'll give you an example. So we we went to the racetrack, we unloaded, and we made a few practice laps. Not even like racing laps, right? Mm-hmm. You're so, talking this past Saturday. Yep, this past Saturday. So, for argument, so you think like, oh, you don't have nothing to do till next weekend, right? Because we only pack the track for a couple laps, no big deal. But that's not the way that our team operates. You know, we, our car still got tore down today. It's getting washed tomorrow. I mean, it's still going to get nut and bolt checked. It's still going to get the grease and all that because that's just the weekly maintenance and that's the stuff that has to be done. So, and, and I don't think if you want to do good. If you want to be at the top of your game. Right. And, and, I, and I know we're not the only ones doing it. I can promise you every other late model driver at the top of their game is doing the exact same thing. Right. I mean, you know, you think, oh, they didn't run a race. They're not, they're not going to be busy in the shop this week, but they'll still put in 40 hours of busy bee work so to as to basically put themselves ahead a little bit you know it's it's constantly trying to stay ahead of the game and and keep yourself going straight you know yeah and that and that's where you you hope i mean that's where races are won you know races aren't won on the track no not you by know? a long shot. that's just the result so, of a week long race to get there. No, races are won. Sometimes races are won three years before the race even occurs. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's uh, a, the, that race is won because of something that you learned at something at a different race. You know what I mean? That race is you know. it's just it the thing is, I don't feel like you could ever perfect this sport you know what i mean like yeah. racing like i don't feel like you could it, it, just driving in general like, i don't think that you could ever be a perfect driver unless mm-hmm. maybe you're kyle larson <laughs> <laughs> That's good. i'm sorry no i mean dude he can drive anything and win oh. and he thinks so too anyway <laughs> But um, no, oh. that's good. I got written up there, you know, somewhere out there he is training and I am not. And when we meet, he will win. And that's basically what you just said. Yeah, that's know. exactly the what other, Everybody else that's at the top of their game is tearing their car down, washing it, checking all the bolts, going through everything week after week. And, and the guy who puts in the most work and effort during the week, those are the guy I'm gonna probably spend my, bet my money on, and come Saturday night, you know, mm-hmm, for and, sure. You know, uh, a lot of people get into racing don't realize that, you know, and they all they think is that well, that's just some spoiled rich kid or some it's money or whatever. No, it's it's the work, it's the work, the effort, the you know. The balance, the it's the total package, you know. You, you you're totally right. I mean, you know, I mean, we all know how the world works. You can't race without money. We all know that. Right. But I mean, there's there's been some people out there that go out there with you know, arguably maybe not as great equipment, and I mean they still Bobby Pierce. He's one right there. I mean, you know, back when he was younger and they were doing those Pierce cars and stuff and they were good cars and whatnot, but uh, I mean, I definitely think he uh, was hurting himself a little bit. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. By sticking with his family and, you know, really trying to help build that car business. But I understand where he was coming from, too. Yeah. So he, uh, but he's just, he's my example of You know, he took equipment that maybe wasn't as desirable as the other equipment. I mean, Bobby Pierce is, he's a hell of a race car driver. He goes out there and 
he puts on a show. Yeah, I remember when he raced up at Merritt and him and Faith were teammates back mm-hmm. then. You know, they didn't really know each other. I was I was blessed though because um my friend Phil and I went up there and went in the pits and went over and I introduced myself to him and he says, Oh, you're Faith's dad. So he knew her at least, you know. She's driving a bandolero, you know. You, you wouldn't believe how uh, just in the normal world they are. You know what I mean? Right. Like we we think, you know, sometimes we all get lost and we think that they're in superstar land, but right. you know, most of the time they're in the normal world, normal world just right. like the rest of us. I mean, yep. they're Yep. Yep. They get their pizza from a gas station too. And and most of the time, most of the time in any I don't care what walk of life we're talking about. Um, Hollywood movie stars or um, football players or whatever walk of life you want to talk about, the ones that are genuine, genuinely successful and happy, that's who they are. They're they're just people. Okay, it's, it's those other ones that put themselves in superstardom. Yeah, and that's that true. I don't want nothing to do with them. Yeah, I'm, you know, most of them are, you know, they're just people who've put in the extra time, the extra work, the whatever it takes to be the best of the best, but yet be humble and, you know, good stuff. Good stuff. That's, I mean, yeah. I mean, you hit the nail on the head. I, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, um, I've, I've met a few over the years that, you know, up until the point I shook their hand, I had them kind of on a platform, you know. Mm-hmm. But then I meet them, and it's like, man, I love them even more now because right. they're, they're just good people. Just good people. Yeah, Bobby was one of them. Just, oh, yeah, he's a super down-to-earth I mean, person. I mean, he is. Yeah, he could have just blew us off. And and uh, trust me, we tried to talk to other drivers that did that. Oh, you know, I, they, they didn't have time for us. You know, I, Trust me. I um, Kind of reminded me of a, uh, a Bush Never mind, I didn't say that. <laughs> I uh, I know all about that. I got a. I remember I I got blew off when I was about seven, maybe seven or eight. It was right when we first started doing the go kart stuff. I got blew off by an unnamed late model driver. Um. And yeah, it hurt my feelings. Right. It hurt my feelings because I was just a little kid. And you still remember that? Oh yeah! That oh, if I get the that chance, sounds... he's getting the dirtiest slide job. <laughs> <laughs> he's still racist, so watch yourself. If yeah, you're yeah. watching it, watch yourself. Yeah, yeah. that's good. That's good. It, you said you said slide job. Yeah. It, you yeah. know, it, well, for for those that aren't in the dirt racing world, I, explain I mean, a slide job. Well, What's a slide it, job? I, I mean, this isn't going to be a slide job. This is going to be more of like a you know take the whole front of his car off. Oh, but, okay, okay. <laughs> but what is a slide job? But a slide job is when one person is running up top and you drive it in on on the bottom a lot faster than them because they're going too slow, and you just pray that you make it in front of them. Right. So you just essentially someone's up here and they're going around the track and you're down here and you kind of like make a triangle and then hope that you just kind of slide up in their way. Right. And if they know you're faster than them and slower, their job is to let you slide up. They're no, not. No, absolutely not. That's never their job. No, absolutely. You don't not. ever. Somebody's doing a slide job. You don't. No. 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 I see. I don't know. I no. Know. If you're faster than me, you better take it from me. You better take it. Yeah. From me. Ain't no. Ain't no free passes ain't around no free here. Passes. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good. I like that. I like that. We see, don't. We don't discriminate. We give everybody hell. What? I, I um. I think of a story, you know, of a couple runners that were running a race, and um, they, I, it was David Goggins, I'm pretty sure, but I, I follow some runners. I like running. So anyway, he's running this big long race, and they have what's called pacers. When when you run the big long race like that, there's aid stations along the way, and at different aid stations, they'll have somebody, you'll have somebody stationed there, and they'll run a segment with you. And make sure you're make sure you're all good, you know, because you run like 200 miles, so your paces will run 20 lap segments with you. 
Oh, really? Yeah, and so so the, this David's running this big long race, and he's got a pacer, and his pacer is like not doing good. <laughs> not, no, I mean he's not doing good at all. He's like here, David's on like mile one eighty, and this guy's on his thirtieth mile, you know. And he, he was just having a bad yeah. day or something. So anyway, he, he stopped and he was kind of losing it or something. So David ran up to the next aid station and got some food for it and brought it back to him. So he's running backwards mm -hmm. in the race to help his pacer because he wants to take care of his pacer. He don't care if he wins or loses. But him and his pacer are walking and a guy runs up on him and, and he stops and he's like, you're David Goggins. I thought I recognized you. He says, you know, my son told me you were going to be out here. And uh, I told him I was going to catch you. And I guess I did. And he runs off. And David's like, dude, he just threw down some scraps. You know, he don't yeah. know that I just ran five miles backwards to bring my take care of my pacer. And so, and then his pacer starts feeling a little better. And his pacer's like, what are you still doing here? Go get him. And he chased them down, and he passed them, like, in the last half mile before the finish line. And when he passed them, when you said slide job, I yeah. thought of this because he says, I give them the side eye. I didn't say nothing, but I just give them the side eye as I went past them. <laughs> make sure he knew who was passing him. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh. uh, that's one thing I've always loved about dirt racing, though. Uh, late models especially, I love... The, the slide job is cool to see. It is. And uh, I don't know how many hundreds of times I've seen it, and I've very, very rarely seen it end in a crash or something. And that always impresses me and amazes me that you guys can somehow do that and still well, keep racing and the, return the favor the next corner or, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think the big, I think... The big time when you'll see crashes on slide jobs is obviously when people are just getting overzealous and, you know, being goofballs. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, you see it a lot with the inexperience because they kind of don't really know what to do. Right. I uh, actually got a funny story for one of those, too. Um, when I was at Crystal, it was first feature I ever made at Crystal. I was uh, I was running on the back, just you know, minded my business, and uh, I don't know what happened there. I just had a total brain fart. Anyways, so I'm driving. Slide, slide job story. So I'm driving around, driving around the back, have it, you know, just racing, having a good time, and Zach Older slides me, and I panic, and I drive, and I go to drive to the top of the track, and I hit Jesse Plater. Because they were battling for the lead. Oh, no. So I didn't know. So I bounced back down to the bottom, and I hit the third place car. <laughs> Logan. I didn't, I didn't mess nobody up. But Did I didn't, any of them come over to your pit? No, no, it, it wasn't. Like, when I, say, when I say hit, it was a very, like, it was a, it, it was a very minor bump. But right. it was just, I, I remember I was like, what is going on? Like, I felt right. like a ping pong ball. I, was, <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't do nothing right. That's good. <laughs> All right. So anyway, speaking of slide jobs, I think Joshua's got a clip of a race or something here. What you got there? Talk about that a little not, bit, Logan. Not, not quite a slide job, but it is a good one. So if you watch here, I'm kind of working the top a little bit in one and two. I can feel it cleaning up up there. And uh, I was getting a little bit more traction, and I could just drive it in a touch harder. So I was able to carry a little bit more speed. And then I would just follow him through three and four. And I think it's right here. I'm able to get beside him. And at that point, it's a drag race. I mean, I'm, I'm driving her into three, and I'm hoping she sticks. Nice. Beautiful. Nice. <laughs> and then... Joshua, zip ahead to like uh, the 10 minute mark or whatever it was on that, and we'll see what Logan could say about that. Who is that you're running with right there? Mike Vandermark Jr. Mike Vandermark? Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. Mike or Mark? Mike. Mike yes, Vandermark. Sir. Yep, Mike okay. Vandermark. I think it, that wrap job on his car, I think, is um, Sweet Graphics. John Taylor yes. did that. Yes, yep. yep. I, I'm, I, 
I think I, I may have helped a little on that or so. I did some stuff with John. He did all of Faith's stuff. Yeah, he, do, he does a great job with his he, rap. He does, he does. i never seen, hey, that guy's got more best looking car awards. than. <laughs> I mean, he's gotten from every track He does. He, he around does. the Midwest. He I mean, does. It's crazy. He, he makes a very nice rap for sure. You got that nice clip ready? This is the end of that race now here. I think is this the uh, yeah? There's the white flag. You're taking the white flag right here. And I love how the cameraman gets right in on you <laughs> on this one. Look at that. Look at that. Man, driving a dirt late mile looks so easy. Oh, it's so easy. You, do, you, just, have, you just turn the wheel and you pretend you know what you're doing. Yeah, and yeah, happens. right. I. Um, who is it from? Berlin. There's a driver from Berlin that's making it, and he just won the um, Carson Hovacar. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I bet he, he, he's he's driving that Andy Frozen's custard's car, right? It's the 42. Yeah, on and, the dirt. Yeah, he's been. And he had that in car camera, and I want to see your in car camera. You oh, guys are like constantly. You, you, just, you do not want to see my, oh my in car goodness. camera. It's gonna be just the beeps for like five minutes at a time. Yeah, just beeps because you're swearing. Yeah, just all the beeps to block out all my swearing. <laughs> yeah, it but... It was not a family-friendly TV show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's got, you know... When I asked you if you lifted weights and you said you don't work out, oh. how do you drive that car for so many laps if you don't work out? Um, I'm a pretty... Generally, a pretty active person. Yeah, um, yeah you look not, like it. Uh, not, yeah. not, not so much with like weightlifting and stuff, but uh, you know, Pops has always got something outside for me to do, whether it's you know, picking up sticks for him, helping him mow, stuff like helping him dethatch his lawn. Right. This week, we were uh, fixing all the washouts in my yard. So, me and him were out there so with a the tractor and a couple shovels. You'll have to see if Pop's got any tips for you on slot car racing because oh, I kicked your butt. Yeah, I don't go listen. No. <laughs> <laughs> that, I, I'm calling shenanigans. So, he got to pick his lane, he got to pick his car, and he had the home field advantage. <laughs> shenanigans. Shenanigans. I'm calling shenanigans. Shenanigans. <laughs> There's no way I'm going to go up against an awesome race car driver like you oh, and not have shenanigans. Oh, what do you mean? Come on now. Oh, what do you mean? <laughs> that was fun. We shot some video earlier, and uh, Logan and I did some slot car racing, and Tyler shot some video, and uh, when, when we uh, put this package together, did I say Tyler? Joshua, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I have five kids, and I do that. I used to get mad at my mom when she used to do that, and now I do it quite wow. often. I call him by my one of my other child's names. I'm sorry. <laughs> the man, the myth, the legendary editor, Joshua, right there. Uh, he shot some video, and we're going to put this package all together. Um, I think, believe it or not, I'm going to be recording three episodes this week. Really? So two for sure, and I'm hoping for... Um, you probably raced against the fifth one. I'm... Uh, not against him, but his son probably. Chad Bauer's gonna come on. Oh, we're, yeah. we're gonna we're gonna yep. talk about uh, their big Sioux I five hundred. Yep, yep. That you was know, aw that was awesome for them. I was, I'm telling you. Do you know the backstory of that? You know how many years Tommy Bauer Racing's run that race? Yep, uh, they've ran it every year except for like the first two, two. wasn't it? Yep, fifty two uh, years out of fifty four. I was gonna say because uh, I was down in Florida during Speed Weeks when the Sioux was going on, so we were watching it um, in Florida. We were watching it on the TV. Did you see the last? Yeah, lap? yeah. We were. Oh, uh, we got. I got the video. We went crazy. Joey got like. His feet, his skis got six foot off the ground oh, that's beside that guy. I thought he was gonna flip. It's, I, it's like so insane. Oh, we were all looking at it. We're like, I don't know if he's got it. Oh my god, he's got it. Oh my by, god. By zero zero I mean, zero seven. I mean, it was insane. Fifty four years of the running that's and awesome. the closest finished ever. Okay, and the first time they won it after fifty two years of trying. Um, a lot of changes over 52 years, yeah. don't get me wrong. But then some of the other cool stories that go along with that, Joey Birch's father had a heart attack and died on that track. Fifteen Was it 15 years to the day that Joey won the race for the yeah, first time? It, it, you know, just so many 
what we yeah. talked what we talked about earlier coincidence yeah you it's know. just it, it's one of those moments that just added up to being beautiful you yeah. know it just it's it it, it couldn't have happened at a better time you know yeah. for I don't even know where I was okay. going with I, that, but it just... No, but it, I, it, it was, I called Chad right away, and I'm like, it, it, can, can you come and do a podcast with me? And uh, Yeah, he uh, he went, went to Florida. He was on vacation mm-hmm. and went to Florida, and but he came back last Friday, and we're hoping he's going to get here this week. If not, it'll be next week for sure. But anyway, so we're recording this one tonight. It's Monday. I, we're going we're gonna to start with this one on Friday. So this one will, will air Friday night at 7 p.m., and so me and Josh will do our work this week and get it all packaged together. And um, um, oh, I was supposed to stand up and show huh. off my shirt too. Check this out. You gonna let me keep this? Yeah, you can keep. All right, I'm gonna wear this all the time. And then you're right, Joshua. Thanks for reminding me. Can you see it? Mm-hmm. Okay. What's it say? You asking me to say it? What's it say? It's so we don't kneel. We don't kneel. What's that mean? Uh, it means exactly what it says. Exactly what it says. It means... I love it. I we, love it. We do not kneel. We do not disrespect the military. We do not disrespect the national anthem. And we do not disrespect this country. Hallelujah. I love it. I love it. It's good stuff. I'm telling you that when I started seeing that, people kneeling, it's like, oh, man. Oh, it's just sickened me. You, they have their right... Sickened me. You know, I, constitutionally, they have their right to do it. But constitutionally, I have my right to be pissed about it. Exactly. Exactly. Ooh. Ooh. There's another quote. Write that one down. <laughs> there's another quote. <laughs> that's good. That's good. And, and that's neat. Um, You know, it's kind of like this whole... Uh, being able to pick your own gender and stuff nowadays that's going on. I heard one yesterday that I just fell in love with, and you can apply it to what you just said, too. Um, They basically says, I'm not telling, you know, you want me to believe that you're a cat? Well, you know, my truth is there's a man and there's a woman. That's my truth. Okay, you can live your truth if you want, but you have no right to tell me what I'm supposed to believe. You don't expect me to believe you. Just as much as you're entitled to your truth, I'm entitled to mine. Exactly. Exactly. So I'll live my truth, you live yours. My truth says I'm never gonna kneel. And we can all and we can all just coexist and you 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 stay over there, I'll stay over here and everybody's happy. Right. No big deal. Yeah, and and I I gotta be honest, if if you if you're if people not kneeling make you uncomfortable, you probably shouldn't go to a race. (laughs) <laughs> because no, I mean that's that, a, that's this a, philosophy that's is a, pretty dominant in the race world. I mean, that's a, that's a pretty bad place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All I got to say is you're a brave soul if you do it. Right. I mean, I. Right. <laughs> yeah. You're yeah. a brave soul. Uh, and I, you know, I, uh, uh, I don't want to talk politics, but how cool was it? When Donald Trump did a flyover for the Daytona 500 and then paced the field, it was super. Cool. How cool was that? I mean, it was, oh, that was, it, was, so it, was awesome. it was so cool. Uh, I loved it. I loved it. It was All very right. cool. So, was there anything else we're forgetting to talk about? You've been so. It's you had been a so question much fun. You wanted to ask me? Question? Yeah. Oh yeah. So, people watching are like, "Dude, I like this young man. I want to go see him race this summer." Where are we going? We are going. Oh, we're going everywhere. If we're in Michigan, uh, we'll next be, weekend. Next weekend we'll be in Michigan. We'll be at ninety six, and we'll be at Thunderbird. The two fight, nights. Two nights. Um, ninety six is in Lake Odessa. Thunderbird is over in Muskegon. The following weekend we'll be on the Mars tour, and then. The weekend after that, we will be back in Michigan. I don't know exactly where yet. And if so, like, people don't have a pencil, they're not writing this down, where can they find you? Do can you have a schedule? Always. I don't have a wrote-down schedule, but um, I have a Facebook page. And if you watch the Facebook page, I normally update it on Wednesday, uh, the week. Like, Wednesday, I'll say where we're going Friday and Saturday. Right. 
So this Wednesday, you'll post yep. that you're going to be at Thunderbird in exactly. 96. Exactly, yep. Cool. So in your Facebook page is? Logan Nickerson Motorsports. All right. And I'll put a I'll put a link to that on my page, too. Perfect. And in fact, we might, um, we might, I, I'll actually put a link on the screen as we're saying goodbye oh, okay. to your Facebook page. Perfect. The um, motorsports one. Oh, yeah, perfect. So, and then um, I did put it out there. It was way short notice. I didn't think about no, it. No, I was. I tried to share it for you, too, to see if we could get yeah, a little. My, my phone has died. But, um, so, it, I wish I would have thought of that about noon today. But right before I left work, I thought, I'm going to put it on Facebook that Logan's going to be here with me. And if anybody had any questions. And there was one question. It was Julie Thompson. Yep, that's my aunt Julie. Ju Julie Thompson asked about your car number. Yep. Who picked your number? And why? Um, I picked my car number. Uh, it was my pop's number, and it may have been my Papa Dean's number. We're not quite sure, to be honest with you. Okay. After um, my pop's racing late models and uh, the truck, and the truck he was 187, and then when he went to the late model, he went to 21. And I always asked him, I said, Pa, where'd you get 21? He said, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't really know where I got the 21. Well, after my Papa Dean had passed, we were looking through some old pictures. And he's standing in front of a, it's like an old bug, like an old Volkswagen bug. And whatever, I, I don't even know what, it was some kind of race car. And uh, it had a two, but he was standing right beside the two. So we, we argued and we didn't know if it was a one under there or not. And we'll never know, but it's kind of fun for sure. So is that the only picture to... That's the only picture. And, and, nobody, and nobody knows what number that car is. Nobody. We've asked my grandma. She, nobody can remember. And your go-kart was that number two, oh, wasn't go -kart it? go-kart was number 21, too. Yeah. 21, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's been good to you. I wouldn't it's, change the darn no. thing. Yeah. It's been my number through the years. Good job. I, I tell you so much. It's it's pretty cool to know you as a friend and this long and to get to know you back when you were eight, nine years old at the go-kart track and to see you winning and stuff nowadays is, I'm, I'm proud. I'm proud. I, it's like, go. <laughs> I appreciate I, that. I mean, <laughs> and, and there's there's been some names in the late model world that I've cheered for in the past, but you're right there now. You're right there at the top of my cheering list. Oh, well, I so. appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, really yeah. Do. And uh, it's it's always fun. And with that being said, was there anything else we want to hit? Was nothing else. Nothing else. All right. Well, I'm gonna I'm doing this with every guest. I guess I got a couple of a couple different options, but. It's just for now. I do. I was telling you when we weren't on camera that yep. I have shirts in the making. I'm going to give yep. every guest a shirt. Um, I, I, I can't tell you right now. I told you what yep. it's going to say, but we can't say that right now because I want, I yeah, want you the gotta reveal. Have, you, you got to have the surprise on The them, surprise. And I, really and, uh, I, I got a feeling, you know, I just got a feeling about that. I got a feeling that shirt's going to take off. Oh, I think so, too. That's I a think pretty it, catchy it, phrase. It, it's going to be really nice. I, I, I think I it's going to so. turn out really I good. I hope so. But anyway, this is nothing but one of my coworkers, actually, mm -hmm. came back. He went to, uh, I can't remember. He went down south. He's got a girlfriend lives out of state. And anyway, when he came back, he, he, he said something. He brought us all one of these into work, all of his mm -hmm. coworkers. And he said, this is to dig yourself out of bowl. Okay. And I seen that and I, I told him, I says, man, I got an idea, you know. I mean, my motto for my podcast is keep climbing. Yep. You know, take the next step, take the next step. But another way, and it's kind of funny because my wife never heard of it mm -hmm. referred to this way, but I, I know we use this term in racing a lot. Keep digging. Yeah. Keep digging. So... Uh, whatever choice you want, here's a shovel for you, and uh, I want you to keep digging. I'm going to keep cheering for you. That's awesome. Can't wait to, to watch some races this summer. and uh, That's sweet. Yeah, Is keep that, digging. That ain't the coolest thing. Keep digging. Maybe you can like hang that on the dash or something in the car. And That's exactly what I'm thinking. Days when you're slacking I, 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 off, you could. I'm thinking this can go some. It's going to go somewhere in the in the race toter during the summer. So yeah, when yeah. You're, you're just looking, you really need that pickup. I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna think, keep digging. Keep digging, Logan, keep digging. I like it. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. And you know what, I, I, I feel, I know that I, 
I guess I'd like to remind you of that now and then, but I, I know I don't need to tell you that because you're always digging. So, sure trying. Yeah, yeah. Go get him. <laughs> go get him, man. Go get him. Sure. Thanks for being here. Of course. Thanks for having me. Yeah, you bet. They try to break you. They try to.